Security gate or is something? Exactly. You'll see a, a reciprocal removal of the expense down below as well. Thank you. That's for the uh, security system here. Uh, the next one, this is really just kind of an accounting thing, but uh, it's really coming from reserves, not being bonded. So there's no change in it, it's just how much that will account for it. I just put there and remind you to my phone. This next one, premium carry forward. Uh, I'll let Ruth talk about the details, but this has to do with the fact that on sale last week. This is for, uh, so we now have actual debt service understood. As part of that sale, we actually get bond premium, which means we'll get money soon uh, already from that sale. And what we propose we do is we actually will receive it in this fiscal year. We'll carry it forward, but apply it to debt for the next fiscal year. And the year after. Yeah, the limitation on the premium is that it can be used for interest only. For different types of debt-related things. So the, the recommendation from the financial advisor was to use, uh, because the result of the bond issue is that our interest costs will increase from what was projected uh, by about uh, 14000 maybe. And so the thought was we could use the premium to offset 2016's interest payment for that debt, specific debt, and then use uh, the remaining in 2017, and then a little bit in 2018. So essentially, for the next two and a half years or so, um, this $6 million bond issue, we will not have to pay any interest payments because we've received this premium. The next item is removing the revenue for Pays Your Throw program. You know, the council didn't vote. It was abundantly clear to us that uh, <laughs> that was didn't uh, meet with your favor. And the final two are CIP items. We had reported in the budget the net number, uh, first for the loader. That included the trade-in. As a technical matter, we'll be paying out the full, full cost, so the approval ought to reflect the full purchase price. And you'll see down below. Um, so that actually adds in, this is a revenue line to begin with, but it adds a reciprocal amount of expense down below. It's really just to make sure that the full purchase price is reflected and approved. And the same is true with the Pleasant Hill Road project. Uh, there's $500,000 in state reimbursement. Again, we'll recognize it as revenue and then show the full project expense uh, in the CIP item. Uh, that's revenues, and then I can go down to expenditures, and then we'll certainly take questions. Uh, the first one is uh, an adjustment, um, an oversight on our part. It did not include the uh, proposed budget, that is, did not include the cost of living increase for the library personnel. We think there will be a savings in municipal building electricity with, uh, with the TriGen system coming online, coincident with the start of this fiscal year. I'm not ready to have you zero that out, uh, but I think in fiscal year 17, we'll see that it go away entirely. Um, the next one is a uh, CIP item that w we actually accomplished this year, so we'll, we propose removing it from the CIP for next year. Ecomain tipping fees, it's, a, it's the other function of the removal of pays you throw. That is the cost avoidance that uh, we will not enjoy. And then I'll let Ruth speak to the debt interest 
uh, that's related to the premium carry forwards? Again, because of the premium, uh, well, because of the actual results of the bond uh, bidding process, the town's interest for that bond issue, this most recent one, will increase by 7,204, and the schools will increase by 5,772, which is on the second page. So we have to show the actual amount we're going to be paying out. But again, even though we're paying it out, that premium will, will help to offset that. So we increased our essentially debt by 7,000, and we're showing a revenue of 160,000. So it, it offsets that. More than offsets. More than offsets that. The next line, senior property, uh, senior property tax relief program. Let's hold that thought. That's another consideration I'd like to talk to after it's not part of our initial proposal. Mm -hmm. And then the last two are the uh, the recip you know the offset for those two CIP, CIP items. So in, in essence, those two, the CIP items, the loader and the Pleasant Hill Road construction, the revenues and the expenditures offset each other. But because we're getting those monies from the state, we really should be recording them as revenues as opposed to a net reduction of expenditures. So on a net basis, if you look at the adjustments to revenue and the increases in adjustments to expenditures, if my math's right, uh, it's a $403,000, $403,306 is the increase to the municipal budget as a result of those adjustments. And the lion's share of that, of course, is the page to throw program in terms of driving those adjustment uh, changes. So as an initial go through, we offer those up and suggest that you consider those as kind of a starting point and then certainly you can go beyond that. Is the, is the difference the difference between two million and five thousand uh, expenditure adjustments and one million six hundred and fifty six thousand in revenue adjustments? Those are just subtotals based on uh, the actual the first column is the proposed as was put in the original budget document. That's what was proposed, and I just put totals in there. I guess I didn't really need them. And then the Finance Committee uh, suggested changes, and then this is what the new proposed number is. I was just is. trying to get a, uh, Tom, did you say you thought that the total was 400,000? Yeah, I calculated by uh, the difference between 692, 537, and yeah, 298, 233. I just looked at the, two, the difference between the two is 351,000. Well, maybe my math's wrong. I've got my, I should rely on my finance director. Now, the difference in the proposed is the three is 349,000, but um, it's the finance committee change column that's going to show the, the adjustments. Quick, quick question, just mm -hmm. on just up to bring up to speed on the Holmes Road. Um, why is that reserves and not bonding? That's a road improvement, right? To road improvement, it happens to fall within a capture area, if you will, uh, for which we keep, we've been collecting uh, road impact fees, and it's a, it's a valid use of those reserve funds. Okay. So, so, we, so those are those are covered by impact fees. Yes, and those okay. those exist. Um, okay. It was just an oversight. We should have proposed that in the first instance. Yep. Great. And then the second question, I'm still on the the increased premium carry forward. Again, we get some premium dollars in advance in exchange for a higher interest rate on bonds that we pay over time. But that 160, was that the total amount, the 160? No, the full amount is oh, okay. 300 so and something. Oh, so you've amortized it over. Right. Gotcha. Well, okay. we, and, and we've got to use it, the best way to use it is for interest on the bonds. Yes, okay. And so we'll use it over two and a half years, basically. And, and that's how you got the 160. Is that right. the interest that we would have got you? We've okay. maximized what we can use in fiscal year 16. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, page two, uh, just to continue on the thought, uh, reflects uh, what the schools come forward with in terms of the expenditure adjustments. And Ruth just spoke to the modest change on debt service now that we have actual numbers. Um, I'm not sure what more has to be said about that. And, I, and again, the revised comp tax sheet reflects both of those pieces uh, at this point. So, question. Um, on a school decrease, I thought the decrease was 1.3, 1.4 million. No, that was from a conversation you and I had earlier. Yeah. Um, actually, no, we, were, we, we were misreading that number. And okay. I, the school will have, in addition to the million two, million well, million one sixteen, they will have an additional forty-one thousand that they're going to be bringing forward in reductions 
that have to do with adult ed and food, uh, school nutrition. So, I mean, we could add that if you were. Yeah, I, uh, I'd feel better if they brought that to you yeah, Monday evening. Yeah. I don't want to speak on their behalf. It is, I'm looking at the uh, school handout from uh, April 14th. Uh, and it shows oh. a differential. Yeah, 1.386. <coughs> they're, show, they're showing their, net, their total budget at 38 508. That's Excuse me, uh, that's their base expenditure. Right. So uh, their base expenditure has gone down from 2.5 million to 1.4. That 1.386 that you just quote, that's, yeah. that's simply showing the difference between uh, current year, 2015, and, and the revised proposed of base right. expenditures. And, and what what it shows when compared with the initial budget that was uh, put out on April 1st is that it went down by about 1.1 million. That's right. It went from 2508 to 1386. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And that's the number that okay. we're Correct. seeing here. That's right. And, and again, we just wanted to model uh, mm -hmm. anticipating questions as to what does that mean. Uh, there will be further changes undoubtedly, but we just wanted to give you a snapshot of where we stood yes. if you right. accepted these changes. So, so, okay. so accepting the changes then on your tax sheet for folks in the audience who probably don't have these documents, the tax increase now is 7.12%, right? Am I reading that right? You are. Require increase in taxes to meets the budgets that we just talked about. Right, with these adjustments. With Correct. these adjustments. Yes. And then there were a couple other. Yeah, do you want to talk about the other considerations? Sure, sure. I just offer up for your consideration. Um, Which sheet do you want? Uh, it's, it's actually just the final piece of the second page that we just talked about. Okay. Underneath school. With you. Uh, there was conversations when Bruce Gulliper was before you uh, reg regarding community services. Um, historically, at least in modern history, we've uh, had additional beach revenues that we've not kind of grabbed to help offset operational expense. We've allowed consciously to go to the reserve account, and those monies have been used, I think, very wisely for future capital items. I just flag the fact that there's the potential for additional beach revenues that could come in. I don't know how long we could sustain uh, that practice, but uh, there is some excess capacity there. So how do you describe excess capacity? Increase the fees people pay? No. no. No, we actually collect more than we budget. Um, so it does reflect the, with the 275000 that's more of a better estimate of what we've historically collected? That's what's well, that's what's been proposed. Uh, I think there's additional capacity there if you want to go there. Um, Oh, I, I, oh, I see what you're saying. So what do you think the additional capacity is? Yeah, I should have been better prepared in that regard. I put it in front of you and don't have a, a good response. I think it's a red box. Like a There's something in the order of a $300,000 balance in that reserve account? Or there will be by the end of the show. Or there will be. Tom, are you thinking that we would withdraw some of the monies that are presently in the reserve account? Uh, or are we talking about increasing the estimated revenue of the 2016 budget? Increasing the estimated in the, in the 2016 budget. Uh, the revenue estimate, I think, is is short of where the actual will be. Oh, short. So can you just question there? Uh, does Bruce have a question? Hold on. It's Bruce's department. It's really I double that to a five round. Pardon? Well, Ruth is looking for that. We've had, um, over the years, it fluctuates, so it could be as much as, as little as 35000 additional from what we budgeted, which goes into the reserve. Uh, last year, it was closer to uh, 120000 above what we estimated. And, you know, part of that, I think, I don't remember what year we actually had the fee increases, but last year was a really nice summer, and yeah. nice summers tend to bring out more people. So crummy days, you know. I would what was last year's estimate? Oh, I don't In have that. Budget. Um, um, hearing that variance from 35 to 120, I would be comfortable saying an extra 50 is is a comfortable number. We budgeted. 
246,000. And we've in pushed it a bit year. to 275. And we can probably go as high as 325 without. Um, is that the expense of money that would go to the reserve account? Yes. Um, and it's not a, you know, there's no guarantee that there'll be that much money in the future years. So it's, right. yeah. it could be a one time revenue. So I don't know if you look, I, I'd be okay having an adjustment. Is, is yeah. that what you're looking for at this point, or we get to the end of the list? Do you want to show Well, um, so we're at the end of this particular list, which are. Um, recommendations that have gone through the SIP. I do agree that we should take the school department team out and reserve that for next Monday night. But let's take into consideration page one, the revenue and the adjustments, mm -hmm. the expenditures, then also the other considerations um, taken into consideration of each other. So, Tom, uh, is there any reason to talk about reducing the funds that are already segregated? Uh, I um, in terms of using some of the current already reserved funds? Yeah, there was in the order of $300,000. I'd recommend against that because that's really a kind of a one-time thing you do, and I think it makes um, great sense to have monies in reserve to be able to fund capital projects so no tax dollars go to that. Um, so I think that's a smart practice to maintain, and I'd recommend against kind of a one-time dip in and use it to balance something out. There's currently about 215000 in the investment account for it. Beaches, so. so it's not that much to begin with. Yeah. So it doesn't sound like it's worth. No, and, and we you know, we'll have some expenses uh, resurfacing some of the lots. Uh, we've talked about an automated gate system. That's something we'd, yeah. we'd like to Thanks. continue to talk about in future years. So undoubtedly there'll be some expense going forward. I guess I'd be okay with the uh, uh, fifty thousand. Yeah. Is that is that the number, Tommy? I'm comfortable yeah. recommending fifty. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So uh, to make this simple. Um, what we can do is uh, have a motion to accept the manager's recommendation, including the adjustment under revenue adjustments for be increased beach revenue, mm -hmm. and make it just one motion. Okay. That's okay with you. Yeah, that's, uh, and that. should we finish the expenditure adjustment line item also uh, beneath the revenue adjustment line? Yeah, so I. Um, then we'll vote, we'll, we'll have one vote. What are you talking about? The one that says de decrease resident senior property taxes. There's, there's actually no change. Well, I wanted to bring that up just as a discussion point. Um, uh, we have budgeted the current year, and we're proposing again next year, $130,000 to fund all those requests. Uh, in actual fact, we we paid out $75,000 in the current year. Uh, that's mm -hmm. one that's done one time a year in November time frame. Based on state law changes. Um, the old circuit breaker program has gone away. It's now something called the Property Tax Fairness Tax Credit Program, and their eligibility uh, requirements have become more stringent uh, yet again this year. So uh, in all honesty, unless we do something else by way of local policy, because our policy is tied to eligibility for the states, so as a function of the state changing its eligibility requirements, Therefore, uh, by virtue of that, folks are not eligible for our program. And I'm just observing that unless we do something to change and create our own eligibility system and standard, different from the states, we're not likely to spend even half of this money to so fund the program. Is it that in this legislative year, they've adopted a rule that makes the standards more stringent? I believe that's correct, yes. And, and that relates to county Social Security monies into Correct. the earned income? It has to do with a very small change that has very big effect, and it's it's the difference between gross income and total income, and it's Social Security earnings. But did I hear you right in saying that those people that are probably currently getting some of this relief will likely continue? It's not like we're going to reduce what people are currently getting. Well, it just might just block the, new... The current, uh, current year, Monies we paid out uh, in November of 14 uh, was 75,000, and this, the the requirements are stricter yet again. By virtue of the restrictions, correct. And the way our ordinance is written, which adopts the yes. state standards, therefore adopting presently right. a more restrictive standard, we're likely to have less than 75,000. Right. So I'm just observing, and it's a delicate area because I, I, it's a great program. We're one of the only communities that fr frankly administers and funds a local property tax relief program. Uh, and I'm not suggesting we do anything um, with that. 
but if we don't change our eligibility requirements, we're not going to spend half of this budget money. So what do you think we're going to spend? Unless we change it, um, seventy-five thousand would be. Seventy-five thousand dollars adjustment. A question I have though is that um, just to be sure, because I think I was on the council when it happened, that has to be tied to the state eligibility, correct? Because otherwise, you can't provide a local property relief based on certain classifications. Is that correct? I, I, I don't believe it does, but it made perfect sense when it was a circuit breaker program because we we relied on the state kind of administering it, and all they had to do was come in and show that they were eligible deemed eligible for the state and automatically they were locally. Um, I don't believe it's a requirement, that, um, but that same law that created the circuit breaker and now property tax fairness tax credit is the enabling legislation for locally funded programs. And we're only one of 10 or 11 in the state to do this. Uh, <coughs> is there a, um, a carryover or a segregated revenues uh, that is available to meet the, the yes. demand that might be might be presented because we don't know how many people are going to yes. do it. Uh, we could have a thousand new applicants who we weren't aware of, and so the, uh, well, tell us about that. The council adopted as part of the, the property tax relief ordinance um, more recently the ability to take whatever we don't spend and put it into a reserve account. I was just looking at that. And our current balance is about $28,653. And with the unspent monies from 2015, we'll be adding an additional $54,800. So, so it's about 80 grand. So about 83000 yes, that we will have in reserve if, if that situation, everybody, you yeah. know. So it dropped to 75000 well, even if it's short, it'd be covered by the, it's covered by the, it's covered by the reserve. It's covered by the reserve. Right. Because we don't turn people away necessarily right. who are eligible, so we could take the money out of the reserve. Well, it, well, it gets complicated. Right. Seeing demand, demand for the, the uh, historically we didn't we didn't we didn't distribute any more than we had budget for, right. but with this change and uh, creation of a reserve account, if we have a demand that outpaces the budget in a given year we're authorized to dip into the reserve and pay out whatever people are eligible for. But with the state law changes, all of the dynamics have changed. Well, and I, it's not the Finance Committee's job to uh, uh, pursue amendments to the rules by which, but obviously it's something that you brought to our attention and I think mm -hmm. bringing it to the Chair's attention and allowing it to go through that process would be appropriate. If we left so the, the 130,000 in and we only spend 75, then that 55,000 would just go into the reserve. Sure. Right. Um, I would actually, so, um, just trying to think this through. So what I'd like to do, uh, um, kind of thinking this through parliamentarily, um, what I would recommend is that um, now in the form of a motion is to accept the manager's recommendations that are presented on page one. Um, also, uh, accept the recommendation and adjust page two under other considerations in which the finance committee changes on increased beach revenues by 50,000 and decrease the senior property tax relief by 55. And that's in a form of a motion. Get it started. Second. Yeah. Okay. Just a point of order. I know I'm out of order. No, it's in discussion. No, but, 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 yeah. Same with you with process. Yeah. I'm okay with doing that. But if there are other adjustments, do you want to talk about other adjustments before we do that? Or do you want to get this done, get this document done and talk about other adjustments? That's about it. Okay. Just so it doesn't get confusing, you'll right. get to a that, new that point. Second your motion. <laughs> Great, I got two seconds. <laughs> um, so, first, I just want to thank you. A very mm -hmm. clear path that was shown as part of these recommendations. Um, as well as active listening to the comments that have been shared by council members as well as us. Uh, so I'm, I'm very happy. You know, I am a little disappointed a little bit around the senior property tax relief. Not that I'm re necessarily reducing it, is that more people aren't using it. Um, because when we first created that, there was um, a significant demand for it. So I'm a little surprised that there hasn't been an increased demand for it given the emails and comments that we received from our constituents about um, how troubled times are. So. Totally in favor of the recommendations that have been presented. Yeah, uh, and I I would love to have us evaluate not this committee but the town council any obstacles mm -hmm. to uh, access and, and application for those funds. So as a part of the process to review the standards that we're going to apply. 
and shown as a, as a point. And, and Tom, maybe your math is probably a whole lot better than my math. Um, but the sheet that you gave us, that takes of all the adjustments we talked about without these two revenue pieces we just talked about, mm -hmm. you had an increase of 2.02% with this 105000 that we're changing the budget just based on because you didn't put any money in for these last two changes we talked about. Right. I right. I did not count, uh, count them in, no. I think that brings that rate down about 1.27, 1.28% as an increase to the, I don't know. Are you, are you, so just that so we're all on the same so you just, just, on, just on the municipal side. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The municipal tap rate. That, that's their calculation sheet. Ruth, can you be a little more exacting about that? That may not be the right answer. So it would be a $105,000 reduction to that commitment number. Peter, you're looking at the, the 2.90 yeah. reference. Um, I'm looking on this municipal tax rate computation page. Oh. And you go down to the very bottom and decalculate just on the only. municipal side. Talking that, that with all the adjustments except for that revenue of 105, it was yeah. a 2.02 percent increase. Okay. And then I think they're calculating out what a, mm -hmm. another 105 in decrease expenditure. I think it brings the number down to a pretty reasonable. Well, no one, Charlie. So what that would do. It brings the towns, which number are they looking at, this one? Yeah. To 1.42 percent, is that what you said? No. It's like your math, think your math is well, more accurate than mine. Well, uh, it would be 1.83, and then when you factor in uh, additional value, it is the 1.42. Great. It's a great, well, it's a great frame of reference. Yep. With these adjustments we just talked about, it's a 1.42 percent. Yep. So, this, excuse me, but this did include the, the numbers that I'm working off is that tax rate comp page sheets that you have, yeah. which included the school's changes that I know we haven't voted on. So your number might be a little bit more accurate because my number is to reflect that million dollars. And oh, yeah, because we've kind of, I think what Sean said, they were taking the school conversation yeah. out of the mix. Right, yeah. But so, this, this so, so, actually, so anyway, I think it's somewhere between 1.3 and yeah. 1.4 percent. When the dust settles tonight, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll recalculate and give you a... Just a great frame of reference yep. for all of us. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Chairman, there's a second, a uh, motion to second. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Any comments? Bill providing a comment on Anything else? No. Before we vote? No. Okay. Good. All in favor of the uh, proposal? Aye. Three to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next is to uh, um, Tom. If you want, do you want to uh, speak to the fire department staffing plan uh, document you provided? Uh, well, I, hearing some receptivity from members of finance and, and also on the town council, uh, particularly in terms of fire personnel. I uh, kind of challenged the fire chief. I said, is there anything short of four? Is there any other hybrid approach uh, you can come up with? And this is what he's come up with. It essentially advances two new full-time positions, and it does make some headway in terms of providing night coverage. Uh, is Chief Thurlow here? Chief Thurlow is here, and he certainly can speak to it in far more detail than I. Yes, the manager asked me to, to take a look at that, and as I've explained it in previous meetings, the reason for four is because of the way that our 24-hour sh shift schedule work and takes four people to fill a slot on a piece of apparatus. What I did is after the manager said that there may be an opportunity to revisit this is I went back to the union and, and we looked at options to be able to phase this in with um, two people full-time and some per diem hours to meet our urgent need, which is night coverage at two of our stations, North Cabra and Black Point. So the proposal um, is to reduce it from four to two full-time folks and some per diem hours. It shows a savings of 96000 over our original proposal uh, when we started the budget process, and our intent would be to come back next year with another proposal similar to this one. Um, so that the net savings would be 231500 over two years. 
and it would get us the staffing that we need uh, by putting them on a different, an alternative shift, a four, uh, four 12 hour shift, uh, and do that with two folks. So without, without this staffing change, do you really feel that it does impact response time, it does impact the potential safety? And the one thing that keeps me awake at night, to be honest with you, is night coverage at the North Scarborough and Black Point Station. I, I, we have a, a serious issue with North Scarborough where there are times when the trucks aren't getting out and we've got a brand new ladder truck at, at Black Point and after the folks, the scheduled folks, the podiums that are there till 8 o'clock at night, from 8 o'clock until 6 o'clock the next morning, uh, there are times that, that that valuable piece of equipment isn't going just because of lack of manpower. So those are the two things that, that keep me awake at night, and those are the, the, the things that we've been able to change with this proposal. What about rescue? Does it impact rescue? The rescue's fine, because we've got full-time staff on both rescues, and, and they are covered. So this is mostly fire, fire coverage? This is for fire coverage, uh, and they're going to EMS calls as well, but it's, it's to make sure that the apparatus is getting out, because they're going as first response in those areas to start CPR or, or anything else while the rescue is already en route. The rescues themselves are going with fully staffed crews. Any questions? Uh, no, I think it's all explanatory for me. So thank you. Questions. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome. So um, I guess this is the opportunity for us as individuals to make any recommendations that we have. Can I ask yeah. one question? Uh, Chief, uh, it says that this was made possible because you received some union concessions. And obviously, I haven't studied this, but the, it, it's, it's a reduced cost. Uh, so what I'm trying to understand is how did we get the cost down? We've got the cost down because... because after the two years. And that's what I'm... Because after two years, you've got four people, right? We do. Right. So it's the, 19, it's the 2016 plan but it's implemented over a 2016 budget and a 2017 budget. The I should have explained that better. The original staffing plan called for hiring four each year over a number of years. So we came in this year's budget asking for four full-timers as part right. of that plan. Right. And we fully intended to next year as well. Okay. So the savings that I'm showing are instead of asking for four in FY16, we're asking for two and okay. some premiums. And then next year, in lieu of asking for the four that are, is in the staffing plan, we're only going to ask for the two next year as okay. well. Okay. And that will give us the four so that we can fill that shift. What, what is the union concession reference mean? The schedule primarily. Right now, we've agreed with the union that we'll, we'll work on the 24-hour schedule, keeps all our folks coming in at the same time and working a standard shift. This is a concession so that, they are a, that we're able to hire folks that actually work a completely different shift. They'll be working four days on, four days off, 12-hour shifts. Okay. And then we're supplementing that with per diem hours to You're make okay a difference. You're okay with the, with, because that's a change. That's a change, but it's a change at the union. They, they certainly understand the, the mess that we're in in terms of staffing. They, they're willing to work with us to, to help us. To cover this hole. That to cover this hole. It's, it's rare that a union would support hiring pretty no, folks, but they, they do, and they're very much in support of this. Okay. Um, this new approach, how um, looking longer term, because mm -hmm. I believe, if I remember right, the original uh, narrative suggested that we're down an off plan by, I think it was the 24 positions. Yeah, yeah I, I probably got that in my notebook, but yeah. So um, at what point do we see ourselves, it seems like that um, this is just a band-aid approach to, the, to a significant problem. We're not going to catch up. We're, we've been 25 years now with pretty ends, and, and yeah. this is a transition that's going to take time. It's my duty to come forward and explain the need, which I, I've done every year since we started the staffing plan. This postpones the inevitable, but it's a move in the right direction. If we can make incremental progress, then that's the best we can do. I certainly understand the difficult decisions that you folks need to make in balancing all the needs within town. We're just trying to, to make some incremental progress. Is it, uh, is it uh, problematic for you if this... Uh, these additional hires took effect on January 1. No, and I'm glad you said that, Councilor, because one of the uh, other points I was going to make, these savings are based on a full year. So another option is this plan and the concessions and the way that we framed it 
is able to be implemented later on. So if that is a, an option, we certainly would appreciate mid-year or whatever if kind you of... get it. But we get it. You get it's certainly going to be an impact next year right. if we don't fund it full year, but we're certainly... Anything you can do, we'd appreciate it. Sure, I get it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, questions or comments? Well, not on that. Okay. Um, I would actually, so um, since it's the topic that we at least have a document in front of, um, I'm going to go ahead. I'd like to make a motion that we adjust the municipal budget uh, to increase the fire department's uh, uh, budget by $199,703 to support the proposal that was submitted to us. Sure. I kind of, I mean, I'd, we could do that, but for me, I'd kind of like to, if at all possible, understand what other possible adjustments everybody's thinking about, so we can kind of know how big. See the parameters of the whole. Thing. Correct. I mean, at 200 here, 200 there, 200 somewhere else, all of a sudden becomes a big number. So I'm, I was hoping we could kind of keep a tally of items that all of us as individual counselors might be suggesting and then for the, does that make any sense? Sure. Okay. Understand that we have, um, I know. not the entire evening, because we have another I know. two to three hour session starting <laughs> at seven o'clock. But I think that's a good suggestion. So we'll have to get prepared for and, and I asked my question of uh, uh, whether starting at mid-year, because that then cuts in half again, the number. And I would support it on that basis. Uh, but I'm happy to reserve that discussion for when we get everything in front of us. Excellent idea. I started the list with number one. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, I've got I've got like a list. I can read them off and then take them as you want. And then so so one thing for me was as we had heard about the community services loan, there was a 25 per week increase in child care services, which is a 10 percent increase. Um, and there's a 10% increase in revenue. And that to me is just, as someone else mentioned in the audience, for those folks, that's just another fee or tax. I would like to suggest that maybe, and I think the reason we got there, two things. One, I know we're more than covering costs because it's generating a surplus. I think they said there's $100,000 surplus in child services. So what I'd like to propose is maybe we take that, and I think the 10% increase was to get it to market value. But I would propose or hope that we could take maybe half of it this year, like a 5% increase and then get caught up. I'm just thinking of those people that are using those services, another 25 bucks a week is, for some people, a pretty significant hit. It's not much money. I think it's 20 grand in the scheme of the budget. So, so that's one item. I don't know where that goes. That would be a revenue Wait, reduction, reduction right? mm -hmm. of about 20,000. Um, <coughs> wanted to think about on the capital improvement piece, maybe delaying the SWAT gear, which was going to be $75,000. Would you say that again? I was making a note on the first one. Did you start over on this one? Um, maybe delaying on the capital improvement plan, maybe delaying the police SWAT gear, which swapping out all the current equipment for new equipment, it's a $75,000 bump. Um, I had on my list maybe talk about whether we should move back from the organic field maintenance or to just conventional. That's, that's about thirty or forty thousand um, dollars. The other piece I had, um, where else do I want to go? The other piece that I had is to talk about the revaluation, maybe taking it out of capital improvement. I don't think it belongs in capital improvement, or I believe it's, it's operational and propose that if it probably needs to go to referendum anyway, but if it stays in, that we propose using reserves to cover it. So you take it out of the capital improvement, you put it into the operational budget, but then use reserves to cover that cost, which is like 440000 We have reserves. We don't have reserves. Well, you mean fund balance, I suspect. Fund balance. Oh, right, yeah, fund balance. Okay. I'm sorry, yeah. Um, I then question about maybe increasing to make sure we have enough money. If you take a look at what our legal fees have been, whether the 80000 we have as a placeholder is adequate, I'd suggest maybe it needs to be more like 150. Um, we have the issue of the outside allocations that we need to decide. Right now there's like 14000 in the budget. And then the other piece, which two other pieces that can come later would be, we've had a lot of conversations, what I'd like to propose going forward, I don't think we can do it for this budget, but from what I understand, the occupancy costs for the school department and the field maintenance is probably 800000 that's in 
the municipal budget that maybe should be allocated back to the school department so we have an accurate per pupil piece. I know there's another piece that they say needs to be allocated back to us, but I just think that makes the accounting much cleaner. Think about that at some point in time. Then the last piece, which I don't think belongs here, but does on our agenda sometimes talk about the charter, because when we pass these budgets on the first read, I thought if they didn't go through, what automatically happens is the current year budget is what goes into play. So what happens is if we don't come to closure, the budgets as proposed in that first read is what actually goes into play. That has a huge implication. So at some point, I just flagged that as saying something for us to think about in the chart. So um, I tried to keep notes. The only one I wasn't sure on how to put into an expense or revenue column was your last, not the last item, the one on the school um, about their fees. Uh, is that a adjustment to revenues and expenses? Well, I think if the numbers, I think the numbers are something like, and I think Bruce mentioned it, that we think we're spending about $500,000 a year on field maintenance. So it's in community services mm -hmm. budget, I believe. Somewhere. It's in grounds maintenance. But grounds maintenance. And then I think there is occupancy costs in the building upstairs, all the office space that they have, which I don't, I'm sure we can come up with a fair market value of that, but I suspect. That's the easiest one to come up with a, a market value of. But that's probably a couple hundred. I, I wouldn't hazard a guess. I, okay. I don't know. Okay. Um, and that may not be for this year, but for next year. And I think that way, then when you do per pupil cost, I mean, a million, if it is close to a million dollars, that, that's a pretty significant. It just makes the numbers cleaner, I think. And during the past year, I know uh, Chair Holbrook was pushing to get that a little bit clearer and, uh, and the allocations uh, not being trades, but rather actually trying to put numbers on them. And I know that uh, Tom has done some work hmm. on that. And uh, you're now noting that there's still several that, because I had forgotten about the rent uh, for upstairs, uh, but I think it would be appropriate to continue that effort forward so that uh, we have as clear an idea as possible about what we're spending for municipal and what we're spending for schools. Uh, right. So I do agree that that's, that's an item that has been uh, worked on in the past and perhaps deserves some further work in the future. So. Um, Start at the top of the list and go through. Well, do you have anything to add so we can just continue the list before we come? Yes. The, well, the I had the um, the rebel, uh, which uh, I have. Uh, it, it does. If it stays on the CIP side, it has to go to referendum. Uh, I have real doubts about uh, the appropriateness of it. Uh, I could see us. Uh, waiting another year or two, and largely because the town just turned it down at referendum right. last year, and I just feel it's kind of inappropriate to say you didn't hear us. <laughs> you know, we're going to push this right at you again. I just think that once they've spoken, waiting another year or two would be the right thing to do. Um, don't disagree um, on that on, on that amount. Um, although uh, I wish uh, more people would have that logic around casinos because it's been going five times. <laughs> so uh, I, I do agree with that. Um, so if you want, I, I, although I do think regardless of how we fund it, I do believe mm -hmm. because it's over 400000 it has to have a referendum regardless of the amount. Um, well, um, regardless of its financing. Um, the only additional item, the two pieces that I looked at were specifically was the use of our reserves one being more in compliance with our own policy. So you did bring it up. I actually had a different reason for using fund balance than using it to cover the reval piece and, and moving it. Um, and the reason is that current policy says that uh, we're supposed to maintain 8.3%, which is basically one twelfth of our pay, uh, one twelfth of our operating budget. Um, if I calculate that based upon the last audit, which is a little stale or old. It's about three hundred and forty thousand dollars, and not knowing where we are this year, if in surplus, I think four hundred and fifty thousand dollars is a is a fairly reasonable. I just I'm, I want to use it just because I think that it, it should go back to the citizens that paid for it originally. So, so you said to get us to the eight point three, you, you think there's three hundred thousand in 
And Ruth can correct me. So when we sat in the audit, I believe the auditor said that the $9.1 million that we had in reserve is equated to about 8.6 or 8.7 percent. So when I tried to calculate backwards what that variance is, I, I figured it was about 334. I'm dyslexic, so it was either 334 or 343. It's, um, I, I was thinking it was still below the 8.3 because we include uh, the way the auditors prepare it is like essentially 5% of revenues, but our ordinance or our policy does not use revenues. It uses operating expenditures. And based on the operating expenditures, I think we were just under the 8.3. As of the end of fiscal year? As of the end of fiscal year, 14, correct. The good news is we've made gains over each of the last three years to build it back to that number. I'm just reminded of the importance of fund balance um, when it comes to our bond rating. And I'm reminded because we sat with the rating agencies just two weeks ago in advance of the sale. And Moody's Investment House, for one, uh, is, is very keen on fund balance. And we actually were able to maintain our rating largely because of the fiscal restraint we've shown in building fund balance back. So. And trying not to use the fund balance so that we can continue to build. They, even though we only have like 8.1 months expenditures, which to me is is okay to do, they actually would prefer two months. So you take what we have in there now and double that, and that's what they would think is a normal. Which you know, finance directors would love that. The rest of the world yeah, probably thinks a it's a little extreme. bit extreme. Tax, taxpayer money. It's right. Uh, having said that, I think a, a further discussion of use of school fund balance uh, might be appropriate. I, I think that's an easier discussion point right. for Ruth and I when we talk to the rating agencies because there's actually some state laws that talk about minimizing the amount of fund balance carried for school purposes. Although the school fund balance is built into the town's it, fund balance. It is. So. Right. Um, so and that discussion we're going to have with the school board finance committee next Wednesday. I hope, I hope Monday. Too. Monday. Monday. Yeah. Okay. Um, and just, you know, Tom, um, even though I wasn't going to bring it up today, I totally agree with you regarding the fund balance with the school department. And I have meant, I'm not speaking out of terms, I have mentioned it at least to Mr. Siazzo, the chair of their finance committee. There will be a discussion next week on that part. Um, because that is taxpayer money that should go back to them and we shouldn't be holding excessive amount of reserves. Um, I will mention also that um, um, while I appreciate the proposal that, that uh, Chief Thurlow provided, I was actually in favor of funding the full amount that was requested, which was the 295. I think that we are incredibly short on our fire needs. Um, I think it's needed and we need to make a significant approach and not just simply give a band-aid approach over two years. So, but if this, and by the way, when I was thinking that through, I was also thinking it through with the recommendation you said that if you, you know, fund it halfway through the year, you're still achieving something, and then they'll be in place for next year as a, you know, as a whole already. So uh, I might have to wait and make that recommendation at the full council meeting, but at least to get it through um, this finance committee, I'm, I'm at least willing to fund, or I would like to see the 199.703 funded that's recommended by the chief. Um, the only other items that I looked at, and um, Bruce is going to throw uh, tomatoes at me, is that I've said this for years. I've always said that community services is a um, revenue generator for the town and it needs to be, I, I actually think it needs to be 100 percent funded by itself. Um, and if that is, you know, contributes to other parts of the town and so does it. Uh, because, you know, and I know a lot of people appreciate community services. I participated in that when my daughter was young, but I don't, I don't believe community services is an, essential, is an essential service for a community because the community can survive without community services, but it's a great value to the community as well and it needs to fund itself. So getting I think it's a great move getting us to the 87.5%, which is a big jump um, from when I first started this argument, but it should be closer to 90, if not 95% sooner than later. Um, and the other pieces I wanted to look at that I had mentioned, and I don't, it's kind of a hard number to kind of pinpoint or at least talk about, and really the projections around excise. Um, you know, the last two years we've seen a significant change and significant, um, almost an explosion um, of excise revenues increasing. Whether or not there is opportunity for an extra 25 or 50,000, you know, I, I kind of would take both Ruth and Tom's mm -hmm. advice around that. I know we've touched that number in the past. Um, it seems like we always at least hit that projection. So maybe if we can be uh, a little better at our number crunching in that category for an extra 25 or 50,000, I think that would be uh, valuable to the budget process as well. I'm having Ruth just do a uh, kind of a year-to-date check-in. Uh, that might help inform that conversation. You know, and the other piece, even though we we can't touch it, is that 
you know, we're pretty conservative on, uh, and that's because of how good our staff is around assessed valuation. So there's going to be a natural um, bump, or I should say a drop, because we always underestimate what the actual valuation comes back at. It's not going to be like it was last year where it went from, I think, 15, 15 million to 40 million. Um, but, you know, whether or not, you know, I think, Tom, you had mentioned that we do a projection somewhere is around 15%. Um, but in actuality, it's anywhere from 18 to 21% sometimes. So I'm leaving that alone because you can't really touch it, but I know that there's going to be at least a natural um, Yeah. Yeah, but the theory historically is we'd rather under-promise and over-deliver uh, right. because if you overshoot, there will be some people that are unhappy. It is what it is. That's the sole domain of the assessor, um, yet it's so tempting, if not required, as part of this process to speculate what where, where might we add a, a end up? But you're right. Historically, we have exceeded our expectations in that regard. Having said that, I'm not terribly comfortable um, increasing that number much. Do you have anything on excise? Excise, if I take where we are right now, we're at 90% collected. After 10 months, we should be something different than that. But we should be roughly about 83% collected. So we are over collected right now while we're, our revenues are coming in higher than projected. Um, if we were to take last year's April 29th through June 30th and add it to where we are right now, um, I'm showing that we would probably collect about $4.9 million, 4970000 So we could increase it. What's in the budget? 4625. However, you know, if everybody bought new cars this year and nobody buys new cars next year, we're not going to right. see that in revenues because the rate drops every year. Uh, and so perhaps another 75 is not uh, terribly unreasonable? I, agree with, I personally agree with you. Yeah, that's, that's okay. I mean, I think it's based on a rational analysis. Mm -hmm. So Tom, the question, the, the only other question I have around the reval is that um, it's, it's the uh, what if then question. Um, so what if it goes to referendum and the citizens say no, um, or what if it's put into the reval and uh, I'm sorry, put into the okay. uh, operating budget, but they still say no? How are we going to tackle this problem about reevaluate? So aren't we required to reevaluate this um, the town? Technically, by every every 10 years you're supposed to do one. Um, or if it falls below a certain yeah, percentage. Our, our ratios are extremely good. They're within 2% or they're, they're right at 100%, frankly. So we're not in any issue in terms of being way out of whack. But we are up against that 10-year, um, so right about 10 years. Um, 2005. Yeah, we're, we're right at the 10-year mark. I, I, I don't believe the state's going to penalize us or anything of the sort, really because our ratios are so are still very good, the final numbers. Uh, it's a really a bit of a chicken or the egg. You know, the voters are supreme. I'm not even sure if this requires uh, town council approval through the budget process. Um, well, that was going to be my next question, because if the state mandates that we have to rebound, the cost is the cost. Um, well, the fact is a prior council last year approved it as a CIP item. It requires voter approval. You didn't get it. That that authorization granted by a past council still is there and valid, frankly. Um, it could be argued that you don't need to approve it again in your CIP. That that authorization will remain until such time voter approval is gained. The other flip side is it may not even have to be in your CIP. You as a council will decide what goes on the ballot and when. And if the voters approve it, we do it. Uh, I think Ruth would love it to be approved so the accountant, so there's um, there's an expenditure that can be accounted for and approved through the budget process. So that's why it's here. But I, I, I it's it's in the CIP by virtue of the fact that it came up as a council goal uh, in December, in January rather, and that's why I included it. Yeah, I mean. Uh, <coughs> You're supposed to do it every 10 years, and there's good arguments under assessing standards for why your numbers can actually look okay, but you're actually out of whack. Uh, and, and, and we've had a, a neighborhood reassessment approach or a type of uh, uh, uh,
structure uh, uh, approach over time for adjustments. So uh, there is that risk. I'm really bothered by putting something back out that the voters just said no to. Uh, Tom's pointing out that uh, the council actually can put it out as a referendum item, even though it's not in the budget. Uh, uh, it actually flips so that we don't have an approved CIP budget with it in there, but yet the matter can be put out to a referendum vote. It's a little bit of an audit. And then if you wanted a belt and suspenders approach, you'd wait till the next following budget year and include it as a CIP with voter approval in hand. So it's, I, I don't think it's magical as to what comes first. Um, the, the, the CIP versus expensing it? <laughs> it's every 10 years, so that's how I've always sort of thought about when, when, you, when you do something every 10 years, then it's, uh, it's supposed to be amortized over 10 years. Uh, and that's, that's why I perceive it as a capital item, not an expense item. Well, I think it ought to be in capital, in my opinion. The funding is up for question. It could be in capital and funded with appropriations. Um, but uh, it, it's big enough that it should be outside of the operating budget because it will just throw your operating out of whack. So Peter and I weren't here when this was originally brought up at the last, last council. Um, how, did, how did we come up with the cost? We have a proposal from the preferred vendor. We'd have to go through a formal RFP process, but we've got a, a pretty solid budget number. So, so it did go up top RFP? And so it has not formally, no, but uh, we went to the... Um, last year it did. No, we didn't formally go through an RFP. We wanted to get voter approval in hand. Our plan would have been to proceed through the fall and early winter with an open RFP process, and then this time, about this time of the spring and summer, be doing the work. It's about a five-month process. Yeah, I don't know how you want to go in 20 minutes to <laughs> get to where we need to go. My, my feeling about it would be just a timing issue, but this year, I think, as we already look at the documents we have in front of us, the, the, the municipal budget seems to be in a reasonable place. There's still going to be some real pressure, I think, with the school budget, especially with the known shortfall in funding that's coming our way and the debt service increase. I would, I would prefer to delay the conversation, push the conversation up about the revalue, so another, another cycle. Let's put it in the year two of the five-year plan, so it's not an issue for fiscal year 17, but it doesn't go away. It's there for conversation purposes. I, I agree with you. So the, the other piece that I wanted to ask um, regarding Peter's recommendation regarding the maintenance and the occupancy costs is also a revenue side, I believe. That I know one person has brought it up, um, some questions that might come up tonight regarding um, revenue, um, any revenue that we account for in community services for managing the uh, facilities. Do we have revenue on that? We don't. Uh, we manage their facilities, but any rentals for? Yes. Uh, zero. Uh, it's at about a $40,000 cost that goes to the school to okay. keep the revenue. So the question I have is? Um, we do get a little bit of money, I think, for the turf field revenues or something. That's correct. You know, outside, outside revenues, we take in under community services. Uh, inside revenue, the school will make they get the 40000 on it. Do you, um, how much is a little? I don't know. <laughs> but, 15000 Okay. But those monies don't really go to support operational expenses. Right. They're, they're going to for future um, replacement, for replacement of, the of the turf itself. Okay. Um, so the question I have, though, is that really whether or not this, um, the request to change accounting practices is part of the budget process, because um, it's about taking the field maintenance. Um, you know what I'm talking about with his question? Is that really something that we should be dealing with as part of this budget, or is it more of an accounting and reporting issue? Well, it is accounting. It, it, it is big dollar numbers. Um, you're taking out of one pocket and putting it in another. At the end of the day, the taxpayer benefits from the arrangement. I, uh, I certainly acknowledge that we can be more specific in, in allocating those costs. And our first foray, foray into that uh, was on IT services, and we have a very good, comfortable position of allocation of those costs. It gets a little murky when you look at grounds maintenance because we're maintaining parks all over the town as well. Those are all kind of wrapped into that grounds maintenance budget. So I think it, re it requires some further study. Um, 
and is something that we've committed to, um, just need to stay on top of. Um, I wouldn't suggest you do something this late in the budget process, but it's something this committee could uh, concern itself with in the coming months. Yeah, I think I think we're at the Sean with that proposal would be that we talk about whether that becomes part of the budget process next year, so everybody has a heads up. Yep. And everybody has fair warning, and because that, that variance can be explained about a change in accounting practice, but I just think it right. it makes it more accurate. And, and I think the council may feel like the finance committee is the right place to uh, put that to work with sure. Tom and the town and community services because it's for formulaic and we have to come up with an agreed upon method for actually valuing certain uh, services that are performed by the town on behalf of the school and uh, by the school on, uh, uh, for the benefit of the town. And, and frankly, entering the season that we'll be spending most of our time, uh, we can start tracking that and, and therefore be able to much more accurately allocate rather than looking at a budget and saying, uh, X percent of this and that, we can be a little more accurate, very more, much more accurate. So maybe the recommendation is that's just for next year? Yep. To the town council? Yep. From the finance committee to the town council, that be put that on the list for next year? So um, of all of the adjustments for expenses, and just to run over them based on, make sure I have them all. Um, there is uh, a recommendation to increase the fire uh, budget, fire department's budget by 19097. Um, decrease or with this bill suggesting to delay it. Yeah, by six months. I would I would I would vote for it if it was effective January one. So I'm just gonna for rounding purposes, I'm just gonna round that to ninety-five thousand. Um somewhere in there. Right, I'll yeah. round it to a hundred thousand. That's close Good. enough. Um, there was a decrease in the CapEx regarding SWAT um, police uh, equipment by 75. The organic uh, field maintenance or management of $40,000 decrease in expenses. Uh, legal fees increase of $70,000. Um, outside allocations, um, a decrease of $14,000. Uh, outside allocations? It's the uh, organizations, contributions, project the rates, the type of the, the are, you, are you saying, because we haven't talked about any of these. I'm just yeah, trying to get the list of yeah, what everybody exactly. has. Exactly, okay. That, that, um. I'm showing the the SWAT gear to be 39,800, so I don't know if I'm not looking in the right place. Or. Have the wrong. It is the number. Yeah, that's, that's 40. Okay, so oh, I thought he said 75. Um, I'm not sure we're 40,000. No, no, I think I did. I'm not sure we're 40,000 for the organic, but I think that might be a little overstated. 30. I would say 30, 30 would be yeah. a more accurate uh, number. The, uh, the organic, we're on a five-year, kind of a five-year test to see if it works. So for us to now start to reduce budgets to reflect as if we were off the organic program, that has to take a town council vote that we don't have, we don't have uh, the authority and discretion to say we're off the organics, we're back on to the other. So it's based on a policy adopted by the council. Yeah, so that, that seems yeah. to me, it raises a question of should we be doing it because we can save $30,000, right. but, uh, well, this but it can't be decided here. Well, no, right. but, it, but I thought what we were right. trying to do is to put together our recommendation that would go to the full council, so they could look just like we did oh, tonight. They'll look at. But see, it. that's it. I, that's a much bigger discussion than I. I don't think that's a budget discussion on May 20th. Well, what we know from last time, uh, there's a lot of community interest uh, on both sides of the issue too. So it's not um, it's not as simple as it might seem on the oh, surface. It's a very passionate issue. Yes. I heard it in your <laughs> So I'm um, trying to do the net. So what I did take out, just to make sure for, from the conversation, was I did take out the issues around field maintenance and occupancy costs um, because it's in about an accounting piece. Mm -hmm. I also took out the revaluation because um, it sounded like that there is um, probably a consensus now not to include it in the budget at least in this year. Um, and on the revenue side, I, I'm showing, so what I'm showing with all of that change, there's a net increase in expenses of $76,000. Including the fire. Including the fire. And excess 
Um, so that, that's expenses. Oh, okay. There is also a, a net increase in revenues of four hundred ninety-five thousand. Um, that, that takes in, that takes into consideration a decrease in community services revenue related to daycare, uh, increase of use of the reserve funds of four hundred forty thousand, and an increase of seventy-five thousand on excise. But we moved the uh, free bail to seventeen, so we wouldn't need those. Perfect. Right, so the, uh, but then I also brought up that I wanted to see the uh, reserve fund. Right. You, you put the reval, uh, you put the re use of the reserve fund into the revenue side and offsetting the revaluation on the expense side. I'm saying I would like to see the use of the reserve fund regardless of what you have the revaluation into the operating expense. Like how much of the 400? But there's 440 or 400. This is a fund balance question. Yes. Could I simply ask your indulgence? Uh, you're going to be meeting again on Monday. This will be undoubtedly be a, co a conversation point with the school. Let us do uh, just validate between the number. Uh, I want to be able to advise you how close to your policy we are, sure. in fact. Um, I'm not discouraging the use, but I think it ought to be the last decision you make uh, rather yeah. than first. Uh, so if we can just perhaps hold that thought and we'll pick it up on Monday <coughs> with more accurate information. Might it make sense, Mr. Chairman, to go through these one by one? I know you're trying to be, because um, I'm sensing that there's not, may not be support for all of these, but there very well is support for many of them. Sure. Um, so, um, but I, for me, it, the biggest issue is about the reserve fund. How much, how much is available in the reserve fund that can be pushed back about whether or not to approve some of these other requests. The, the only one I'm not correlating to the use of the reserve fund is really about the fire department, uh, but the other pieces, it might be contingent on that. So um, that's why I was trying to look at the net effect of what everyone's recommended as part of that. So, um, but for the, for the, like the I you want to vote on each one of these individuals? Yes. Yeah. And not waiting for much week. So, I, uh, I'd be happy to vote on, you know, the organic fields and sure. the revel. I haven't thought about the legal fees. That's worth talking about the community service reduction and uh, from a market price. Yeah, I mean, and I don't know about the SWAT because no one's ever said we don't need the SWAT gear this year. So uh, they're they're all they're all worthy of discussion. I just have. I haven't heard the pros and cons. So okay, so um, do you want to speak on that since you're recommending the removal of it? <laughs> on which? On which? Uh, SWAT gear. The two uh, questions he has are <coughs> legal fees and SWAT gear yeah. um, that haven't really been discussed yet. But, or do you want to put it in the form of a motion and then we can you can discuss it and then move each one? Or? No, because we're going to, I think yeah. what we're going to do is we're going to. Yeah, they're in or out, and then make a universal decision. To, to move this along, I feel like I'm stumbling here. To move this, can you talk about those legal fees, and, and then maybe we can ask uh, police chief to come up and talk about the SWAT here. But um, can you talk about the legal fees and the recommendation to increase it by seventy thousand? Well, legal fees is one of those areas that historically we tend to be under budgeted. Um, we always hope for the best, but history suggests that we'll exceed the eighty thousand dollar budget. Um, one of those things that it's never easy to add more money to the budget, and consequently we don't. So I, I, I don't know if we need a full seventy thousand. Um, that's really a shot in the dark. Uh, Ruth might be able to tell us some of the history there. I, I can pull it up here, but we could tolerate some extra money there quite easily, Frank. Yeah. I would also like to sit down with Bernstein Shore and. Renegotiate, if you will, and, and maybe even find a new is, law firm. Um, I think we're paying top dollar. Uh, I know we are. A bid process for all those services. We've been budgeting about eighty thousand a year. In thirteen, we spent one hundred and six thousand. In two thousand fourteen, we spent almost two hundred and forty thousand. So far this year, we're looking at one hundred nineteen. Yeah, so we're already kind of, over. Like kind of thought so. Well, we have some unique challenges over the last couple of years. Um, you know, 105 is probably a fairly good. Okay. So maybe 105 is a better number than 80. Okay. So it would be a $25,000 increase. 
2017. So um, I think uh, for the sake of time, I'm, I'm just going to go through each one of these and if you have comments about it, it'll just be easier. Yeah, that's okay. So I will make a motion that we increase the fire safety budget by $100,000 to accommodate a half year implementation plan of the proposal that Chief Thurlow provided. Yeah, I'm of that. Any, any uh, discussion? Comments? All in favor? Okay. Three, zero. Thank you. Okay. Um, the next is the removal of the capital expenditure for uh, the SWAT equipment of 75000 uh, Or just delay. Or, or to delay, but to take it out of this year's budget. Yep. Um, would it be possible uh, could the police chief come up and maybe comment on that? That number is 39.8, just to be clear. 39.8. So My bad. The, the suggestion is we put it in the 2017 capital budget. Right. Thank you. How are you doing? Hey, Chief. How are you? And then you say the department might bought it. In my mind, where I'm trying to get to is it looked like for the debt, I'm really concerned about our total debt approaching 100 million. It looked like what we're putting in CapEx and everything pretty much just washes out with what we're actually paying our debt service now. So I'm trying to find a way that we actually put less into the capital improvements so we can start working that number down. So I was just trying to find something that we can push off in time so we can gain on the $100 million. The number is uh, 39.8. It's not 75. Yeah, I'm not sure where that yeah, came from. But um, the... Um, I guess the bottom line is, is that, you know, we will do what we have to do. But I have to tell you that some of this equipment is, is, uh, has seen its life expectancy. We don't uh, come forward asking for equipment like this when we don't need it and haven't uh, put it through its useful life. Um, we had some discussion, a little bit of discussion about regional teams and so forth. And I just, I think it's important to understand that when these situations happen, um, there, we have a crisis on our hands. This is this is above and beyond what what our folks normally uh, deal with, and we have to have people that are trained, that are equipped, um, that are able to uh, come forward and deal with these situations. And um, you know that's why we we uh, joined with South Poland and Cape Elizabeth because we don't have the full cost of the of a full team. Um, but I think it's critically important that we do what we're doing. And, um, you know, the, the, the suggestion maybe that we look at other ways. There are other ways that you can do this. You can have the, the state police or the Cumberland County or other, other folks come in and do that for you. But, um, number one, we have no idea what their training is. We have no sense of what their equipment is. We The um, troopers come from, um, and this is not an indictment on them, but they come from New Gloucester or Auburn or, or York or wherever they come. And I think it's, uh, we, we gave this a lot of thought when we put this team together, and I think it's important that we maintain the training and, stand, and, and equipment and standards that keep it effective for us. And, you know, it, you talk about $39,000, and I, and I recognize the situation that we're in, um, but all it takes is, is th these situations probably um, have the potential for more liability than anything else that we do. And to have one go bad um, could, could be pretty expensive. But going bad has to do with training and the expertise of the personnel. But so so what, what's the equipment that they're actually replacing? I mean, guns are good. I mean, some guns can be decades old and still be very effective. So, so what's the equipment that's actually being replaced? There, there are some, there are some weapons, and, and I agree with you that weapons generally last a long time. But our people qualify and, and shoot um, constantly, so um, you know that they don't last forever. Uh, the gas mask and so forth that they need to, for the chemical agents that they use and so forth becomes like hip boots or anything else that you might have uh, that become weather cracked and and that sort of thing. Um, those are the two big items that. Uh, would a year's would a year's delay change? Put anything at risk? Uh, how, how do you how do you how do you predict that? I mean, we 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 haven't we haven't come forward we haven't come forward and asked for this 
um, previously because we felt like we could stretch it. When it gets to the point where we really feel that there's a need to, you know, I mean, it's, I guess you could make that argument with anything. You know, could a, does a fire hose need to be replaced? Does a um, taser need to be replaced? Could it, could it last another month? Could it last another Chief, year? Chief, uh, possibly. Is, is the equipment integrated in that you wouldn't want to uh, prioritize aspects of the equipment and say, we really would benefit from spending 30 of the 39,000 on gas masks and certain other, other mm -hmm. things? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, see, what I'm trying to understand sure. is whether for me, it gets to the point where, if it were an operating budget item, thirty-nine thousand, I would, I would con give it more careful consideration. But it, it's a CIP, it's a, it's a capital budget mm -hmm. for thirty-nine thousand, and we've got a hundred million uh, outstanding. So I find that if it's a public safety issue to get this, then I say we should do it. Uh, but I ask the question whether. There's some aspects of it that are more vital than others. <coughs> I, I would want to. I would want to talk with staff about that. Okay. Uh, this no. was the proposal I, that came forward. Uh, I, I will. I will make this offer, uh, <laughs> Council. I'd be happy to put it in my operating budget. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, for what it's worth, when I met with these requests from department heads, I defer to their professional judgment and um, and. I'm not sure what more you can do other than have confidence that staff doesn't come forward unless something is, is um, required in their professional opinion. These aren't toys. These aren't for our personal enjoyment. They're for uh, doing a pretty important uh, job. Sure. So um, if I understand Peter's initial request, the motion is to remove the capital expenditure for the SWAT equipment. Yeah. Is that correct? Is there a second? For the purposes of discussion, I will give it a second. I would actually ask that um, to amend the motion and to remove it from the CapEx and put it into the operating budget of the police department. I'm not sure. No, I mean, I, uh, I'd, ra I'd rather have <laughs> it you would support it. The operating budget, what I would do is try to facilitate the <laughs> Based on the, the chief's explanation uh, and that it is appropriately in a capital budget at $39,000, then I'm convinced that it should stay in the budget okay. as a capital item. So uh, the motion on the floor, so no one seconded my amendment, but the motion on the floor is to remove it from the CapEx budget. Um, all those in favor? <laughs> <laughs> um, even though it wasn't on the, uh, so therefore it stays in the CapEx budget. Okay. So the vote is, and uh, technically speaking, all opposed to uh, The next is about the organic uh, field maintenance. Um, if I had the number correctly, was it 40,000? I'd or suggest 30 is a better approximation. Thanks, Chief. 30. Thank you, Chief. Um, and uh, Peter's recommendation is to remove that from the budget. Is there a second? I'll second it. I'll second it for the purposes of discussion. Any comments that you want to add? Um, all in favor of removing it from the budget? All opposed? I will say on this particular item, I do want to hear the conversation at the council level, so I might change my mind on this because I do understand and respect that a policy was written and want to kind of hear about that. Plan. Exactly, and uh, when the five years are up and we get all the information in on whether this is a program that's viable, uh, I think that's the time to make the decision. And uh, legal fees, the recommendation um, and motion from Peter is to increase legal fees by $25,000. <coughs> um, is there a second? Second. Comments? Seems like an appropriate adjustment. Absolutely. All in favor? And then last is around outside allocations and contributions. Um, if I remember correctly, there was um, the manager has recommended um, basically um, unfunding everything except for project grade. project grade at 14,000. Well, uh, Project Grace and Scarborough Land Trust. Land Trust. Oh, Land Trust? Those are the two. What, where, is, where is Scarborough Land Trust? Land Trust oh, is not the general government. It's not in under uh, outside agencies. So it's not in there. Oh, I beg your pardon. And, and his, and what is 14? 
It's only ten thousand. Yeah, it's really 10,000. Uh, the 147 are made up of 10,000 for outside allocation to Project Grace, 4,000 for land trust, land trust and 7,000 for contingency. So I think you're, 700. you're 700. So your motion really is for $10,000. Yeah. No, I, well, I think my motion was I think the conversation we had last time was wanting to have a broader conversation around all of those. Mm. What you had on there was 70,000. And I, and I think I heard Sean say, why would we just select a couple? So this this is really saying, you know, unless we're going to have a broader conversation tonight, which or we can postpone it, is why did we go from the sixty thousand we spent last year down to fourteen seven? Should we just take it out of the budget completely? Because de facto, what we're leaving in is land trusts, project grades, and seven hundred, and leaving all those other entities out. Well, that's so the point of. Um, normally, this is what the manager does: is only puts in project grace, and then the finance committee okay. makes the adjustment for the additional Decides fifty. How much and who? Yeah, yeah. and and uh, the payments to the other agencies. It's not like we just said, okay, we're just we like these agencies, we're going to pick them. It's really these are agencies that actually provide services to the citizens in the town. Um, more so than if it were, you know, it's not something that they can use out of, like, for example, the property reserve or... Um, the one exception is Project Grace, and right. they do get favored status because they're Scarborough-based and provide tremendous value to our residents and, frankly, save us money on general assistance, I'm convinced. Sean, I think where we were, though, is I think you then, I think, gave it to Bill to go to the Rules and, Pol Rules and Policy Committee for all of these to have come up with a policy first that would then drive how we made those decisions. So I don't know what we want to do from a budget perspective tonight. So I mean, that's what I'm just yeah. trying to, that was the motion to say, I think right. we punted it to. And that's not going to. Yeah. That's not going to happen. And right. Right. Not, in time. not in time, probably. So, so I don't know how we want to. So I think it's, it's worthy of, of having the rules committee take it up and have, have it be a post-budget analysis, what, but well, this year. Right or wrong, what past councils have done is adopted a dollar figure without a conversation around who gets what. Um, the Finance Committee has taken it up after the budget's been adopted, sometimes months after. So to, to, to determine the allocation. Yeah, who gets what and how much. And then it comes back and makes that recommendation or? Actually, the full council gave past finance committees uh, the authority to make that decision and staff executes it. So, but it is a budget issue. If you don't budget anything here, there will be no money to be allocated. But it's 14-7, it's right? Correct. Okay. That's in my so budget. Right, right now, what we have is we have a history of a relationship with a dozen or more mm -hmm. uh, uh, organizations that support the community, Skyrock community. Yeah, to varying degrees, yes. And we require, we've routinized the application process, um, and I believe Colette provided that material to you, that requires folks to tell us specifically how they're benefiting, their services benefit Scarborough residents. And so we have a more of an apples to apples local um, perspective, if you will. Prior to that, it was the Wild West. People all over the state were asking us for money. Yep. So, um, so the discussion, I'm happy leaving it at 14.7 and letting the council address whether they want to fund that amount, increase the amount, or to uh, decrease it and send it to the committee for a more formal process. So I'm happy leaving it where it is right now. Are you? Well, I think it's important to uh, provide, uh, to, to not simply go from providing support providing no support uh, uh, in one year where you say, why? You know, is it because uh, uh, it's a tight budget? Is this a tighter budget than last year or the year before? Uh, uh, so I can see your point about leaving it at 14-7 and allow that discussion to take place on May 20th. Uh, or have some of that discussion between now and May 20th. Uh, so, uh, but but I feel as if it's it'd be appropriate to uh, to uh, include some monies for some of these organizations. 
obviously some of it's so small that I don't think the American Red Cross would notice it, that they didn't get our check for $670. Right. So um, do you want to, uh, I'll go along with the 14.7. Okay. So on the expense side, that takes care of all of the expenses that were discussed. There are three um, issues on the revenue side. The first issue, um, I'm going to take the easier one to get this through quickly, is the excise increasing 75000 So I'll make that in the form of a motion. Is there a second? Second. Um, any comments? That's pretty. No, prior discussion I thought was enlightening. All in favor? So that will, that's uh, increasing 75000 um, Then there's also um, the question of uh, reducing the daycare revenue and community services budget by, I think it was 20000 Yeah, just take the increase from from 10% to 5%, from 25 bucks a week. Yeah, but that's fine. I'd like to know whether, uh, Bruce, do you have an opinion on this? I mean, $43,000 increase over last yeah, year. I would just say that. Yeah. 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 Formal councils have asked us to try and get to 90%, and that was the sole purpose. We haven't had a pay increase in that program in four years. So I felt that a 6% is the number I come up with increase at $25 uh, is what we were looking at. It equates to $43,000 in additional right. revenue. Right. Well, but we could yeah. do it over time. That's what you wanted to do. Well, well, I, I'm, both, I'm, I'm okay with if it's, if it hasn't been done in four years and it's a 6% increase. Well, it's, it, and it's a market-based price. It would be at the high market, market end. Service, then I think that's because they, they pay, they would pay somebody else to provide the service. Correct. This isn't this isn't public schools mm -hmm. or town clerks. This is a daycare. Correct. I, I guess, Bill, where, where I was, where I was thinking that was a little different. I mean, if we have an increase in four years, that's you know, it's a big jump. I agree. Yeah, it's a big jump, and we probably should have been increasing it. Well, we were going through a recession. There was a number of things yeah. to look I mean, at. That, so but the other thing it wasn't the right time. Yeah. I mean, the other thing I look at, I agree with Sean about community services should be, but, but that program already is generating $100,000 in surplus. So we're more than covering the cost. Yeah. So to charge those folks for child care more to cover the cost for other programming, I'd rather see fee increases in some of the programs that aren't covering the cost. Let those people carry oh. the cost. But I don't think of those. Most of our programs do cover the cost. It's, it's it grounds is. maintenance that right. really That's kills the, our program. Yeah. Okay. You know, the programs itself, you run the program, so we, the we're covering those costs. Right. right. I mean, you either mow the grass or you don't. So <laughs> I mean, it's your choice. Yeah, and I you know, you're I'm not going to get the kids to play soccer on grass that's just tall. I mean, I guess I'm just trying to be sensitive. I mean, when we look at these numbers, taxpayers are going to see an increase this year. I agree. And, and, and But to Sean's point, past councils, they would like to see us at that, you know, 75, 85, 90, 95, 100 percent self-sustaining. What's the charge going from, from what to what? It's a $25 increase. I think it's the base, the base number was 200 to 225. So, so we, we charge from 200 to 225? It was a month. It was a, a month. monthly charge, yeah. For a month? Because we're four and after care. care. So it's less than a dollar a day? Yeah. And for me, I mean, um, the many, many emails that I've received regarding the budget, um, it is very consistent and very apparent that more and more people want people to pay for the services that they directly receive or benefit themselves to the extent that they can. I've got a so, trash program I want to talk to you about. <laughs> 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 you already had me, yeah. had me on go on that one. But, um, um, so, you know, I, I got, it's very challenging for me to sit there and say that there are some services in this town that uh, people must pay on their own, and there are some services, well, it should be subsidized by other people and, and have a straight face about that. You can't, yeah. to me, say that um, with a straight face. So uh, community services, it should be, you know, 100 per, uh, my goal is 100% someday. If you take out grounds maintenance, I'm above that. Oh, I bet you are. Yeah. Yeah. Do the math. All right. So. Um, but we're not in the legislature. <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah. that. So, you can't um, have it both ways. Go. Go. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So, P Peter's recommendation and motion is for um, a net reduction in the daycare revenue by 20000 For the purposes of conversation or a vote, I'll definitely I'll second it for you. Um, any other comments or questions around it? Um, all in favor? 
<laughs> I'll oppose. Um, and then the last item is the use of reserves. Um, um, so I don't even know where to start with this because I know that Tom, you said that you're going to do a better calculation. Um, what I would like to do is at least get it onto the table um, and at some value, <coughs> some amount, and then we can either amend it at full council or even on May 5th if this is the one item that we come back to for this particular budget, we can always adjust it and amend it. Um, so I would actually like see. I, I wouldn't mind uh, seeing it. Uh, I'd love to see how the school ends up and we end up. Yeah. Because Before we could do that. Well, mainly because I think it's it's going to be one of those, you know, really tough to swallow numbers. Right. I guess. And so uh, once it, once you see that number, then fund balance starts to be uh, a, a bigger and bigger part of any mm -hmm. solution. Uh, and so I, I see what you're saying. It starts something, but I. Uh, well, and, and, the and, and it's a real problem because it's a bond issue. Uh, it, you can't repeat it year in and year out. There's there's all sorts of problems with it. But we're also dealing with I think if you say we're not going to have any new hires, we're not going to have any new programs. It's still a big number if you at, look at where the schools at and where the towns at. You add them together, so uh, fund balance is one of the few things that remains. And so I wouldn't mind having that discussion, sort of at the end. Okay. But that is great. Um, I was prepared because I because I think I'd be okay with some number, but I'm also okay with having it. I think I think Sean, you're proposing to have some type of placeholder for now. Correct. And I think I'd be okay with that. A reasonable placeholder. I'm thinking a couple hundred thousand. Correct. Um, but I also can respect Bill saying, I, I think we're going to have to loop back to this anyway, because I think you're absolutely oh, right, Bill. I think the number, when we get all said and done, it's still going to be a painful number. It's still going to be sad. Right? Yeah. It's going to be a painful get, number. I'd suggest get through Monday, see where, kind of where you're at, okay. and then you can have a more informed discussion. Ruth and I will be prepared to tell you exactly where we're at and how it compares yeah. to policy. We'll send you a new tax rate comp sheet so you can see where things Right. Yeah. I mean, just keep it. There's going to be a maximum number no matter what. Yeah. Even if they come back and say, well, I mean, max number of reserves. And the reserve, uh, maximum number that we can use in the reserve. Right. 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 You, can't, I mean, you can't take it down um, to 50% because then you're, going to be, you're really um, um, shooting yourself in the foot. You're going to jeopardize the bond rating as oh, right. right. a result of it. So to me, that's where the 440 or 400,000 is, but I can, I can definitely make it. They can actually change the bond rating at any time, so well, be, be <laughs> cognizant of that. Part of this yeah. will be to give you accurate numbers to talk about. What is that okay. number? What that, what that, what that, that quarter, that's a safe exactly. quarter that can be considered. Yep. Um, so with that, uh, I'm showing that at least for today, what we have done is that we have done a net increase in expenditures of 31000 and a net increase in revenues by 75000 so it's a little bit uh, below the 2.02. The 40,000 is, is probably, uh, or 1. What was it, 1.5 before? Oh. So it's going to be relatively unchanged. And, uh, and the size yeah. of the budget is relatively unchanged. Yeah. So uh, thank you. That was uh, not as painful as it felt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, good job. Expenditures <laughs> 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 are 125,000 because you did 100 for the fleet, uh, fire, right? And then. Yeah, I did the net, so I apologize. I, I just did the net. The fire was 100,000, legal was 25. Uh, 75 for excess. Yep, we've got that. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll clean this up, make sense of it, and, and reproduce the tax sheets. And perhaps you can start your meeting on Monday just with a quick little recap. This is what you did. Cool. So with okay. that, um, just to finalize, I'm going to get heads out here. Um, Future meeting dates and times uh, tonight, uh, for anyone that's uh, watching live, at 7 o'clock at the high school auditorium, we start our town budget forum. Um, joining us will be the school board um, and then the finance committee. Um, as well as, um, I do want to clarify, if people happen to be watching, it's kind of late, but um, there's been some misnomer out there about how this was structured, the forum site. So it is an open forum in the sense that um, in order to, we have no idea if there's going to be five people or if there's going to be 5,000 people. So trying to really maintain some decorum 
Um, we have received, I think it was about 40 questions, Tom? It's now 51, 51 as of last. Some of them are duplicative, mm -hmm. um, but uh, we will try to get to all of those in the time that's given. But in addition is that there is an opportunity um, for people to ask questions there if they weren't able to send them in. Mm -hmm. um, that is a misnomer that uh, I don't know how that spread because uh, we've repeated that several times. And there will be place cards for people to write down their questions and submit it to the moderator um, so that we can kind of keep things flowing. So I uh, hope I can see everybody there. And then our next meeting is May 4th. Um, the purpose of that meeting starts at 7 p.m. And um, that is actually a joint town council and school board meeting. Um, it's really a workshop where we're going to be talking about um, the school's budget and making the same decisions um, on their budget that we did today. Just point of clarification, it's Joint Finance Committee. No, yeah, um, no I'm sorry. Okay. Full council. Right. Full board. So the Joint Finance Committee. Mm -hmm. um, any public comment? Kurt? Mike Turek, 11 Bayberry Lane. Uh, Town manager is correct that the uh, circuit breaker changes has decreased people's eligibility on the state income tax. Uh, I'm one of them. Although my income actually declined, Social Security taken into consideration, uh, I'm no longer eligible for any tax relief. Uh, I'm disappointed in the 7.12% tax increase with a CPI near 1.8 percent and inflation quite similar to that. Uh, when I worked for Fairchild Semiconductor, the CEO was a man named Gil Amelio, and he said that uh, you cannot achieve what you cannot quantify and what you cannot articulate. And we have the Scarborough Town Council goals for 2015, and one of those is a responsible and realistic budget. And I don't understand how you can possibly call this a responsible and realistic budget. Uh, I'm just stymied. I have to tell you that uh, I worked at Lowe's today and one more person came up to me and he said, I'm selling my house. I paid $460,000 for it a couple of years ago. I just can't live here anymore. I'm moving out of town. I realize that somebody else is going to come in and somebody's going to pay those taxes. So you guys don't care. You're going to get your money. But uh, I'm disappointed. Anybody else would like to speak? My name is Larry Hartwell. I live at 9 Puritan Drive here in Scarborough. <clears throat> I think the, uh, the Budget Committee and the Town Council this year, or this year and in the past has done a good job on the municipal side of the budget. Um, a comment on earlier years, you would ask for a low increase of say like 3%. The first responders, the public works, the library, those folks met that. The school budget, they brought in a number, what, 8% or so, which ended up being almost 7%. Again, this year, we're going through this process, we're down less than 2% around the town, except for the school budget. And the school budget is the, the, the gorilla in the room. I think in the, uh, there's been members of the school board that they said, you know, we're supporting the schools. This is how the, the uh, the uh, superintendent is measured on this. So I don't look to the school department or the school finance department to keep a budget in line. They have their responsibilities. I think you have your responsibilities here. You've done a good job of questioning all the departments. I know when it comes to the school department, you can't make line item changes. And that's fine because the big thing is what's the percentage going to be? You know. Because we have these large increases each year, 7%, 5%, 8%, 12% this year. These are totally out of line with any, anything that's going on in the economy. There's, nobody, there's probably nobody in this room, maybe nobody in this town that's had, like, say, a 25% increase in their income in the last five years. I don't know what the percentage of growth 
is in the school budget, but it certainly has exceeded that. And so I just implore you, your, as, our, as far as I'm concerned, our first line of defense here on this budget with the school. Uh, that's looking at it at 10,000 feet, not worrying about what program and so forth. The salaries may be fine, but that's the largest part of the budget. Um, and the only way you cut a large bu a budget where most of it is in, in salaries is you need to reduce your positions. But that's not your discussion, that's not your call. But you're here to protect me as a taxpayer and everyone else. And I think you should make uh, a statement on that. And not a significant statement on that this year. And like I said, you're the first line of defense, the full council is in that. So what we need is at least two of you to say to stand up and say, hey, this is not anywhere near the right number or the right percentage. You've had these large increases and then these are the large increases on top of the, the previous years. And uh, that's about all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Great. Uh, not seeing any. Uh, thank you, everybody. And uh, motion to adjourn. Okay. All in favor? Thank you, everybody. We'll see you at 7 o'clock at the high school.